our feeding time procedure has been to bring in their favorite grain treat first, put that in the feed station for them. Let's see, let me say that again. Yes, look at all these good goodies. Look at all these good goodies. Thank you, Indigo. Yes, goat kisses. We finished installing the last buildings in this cluster of goat sheds and this permanent fencing just in time for the rainy weather to really set in. We've got a nice break in the weather today, so I thought I'd just talk about a few things, give you an update on how, how everything's working out. This area quickly became a muddy mess, so I've chipped and shredded all of the branches that we had left from what we took down near the driveway recently and just created a nice kind of a bark mulch area here. I was spoiled a bit with the dry summer and early fall by not having to keep these lids on our feeding stations. You can see by the goat poop that our goats can get up here. I'm not really worried about it. The plywood is sturdy and I'm not really worried about the goats messing it up. One goat in particular likes getting up here. Stormtrooper is a weathered male, so he's incapable of breeding. He stays over here with the does, and he's the one who really likes getting up there. Indigo, our largest goat, will push the station completely over, so I have to strategically place it near something that she can't push around. So far that's meant really large log rounds, or that temporary shelter that we recently moved out of this enclosure. Right now it's the big stump. It's working pretty well, but now that the space is pretty much the way it's gonna be, there's a few new options of where this can go. I still don't wanna put the feeding station right up against the fence because Stormtrooper or one of the other goats could get up on top of it and then just jump down on the other side. Plus at feeding time, it's nice to have space for the goats to get mostly all the way around the feeding station so it's easier for them to share. We do keep the bucks feeding station near the fence because it's just so much easier to feed them from this side of the fence. Yes! If I'm trying to take hay into their enclosure, they might escape at that point. Plus, they'll just jump all over me while I do it. Removing the top to put the hay in is pretty difficult, and I do have to be inside the enclosure to do that. So, I've just been sliding in small flakes of hay right here. I could just rebuild this feeding station to make it taller and easier to slip in larger flakes of hay, but then it'd be a little more top heavy it's a balancing act. The goats can already move this thing around. Chickens. This thing can be moved around by the goats. Right now it's staying more or less where it is because it's kind of wedged in a little bit by that dead tree there. These goats don't get up on top of this feed station unless there is a large log round nearby for them to use as a jumping off place. Our feeding time procedure has been to bring in their favorite grain treat first, put that in the feed station for them. Let's see, let me say that again. Yes, look at all these good goodies. Look at all these good goodies. Thank you, Indigo. Yes, goat kisses. Okay. Our process at feeding time has been to bring in their favorite grain treats and put that in the feeding, feeder for them first. Then it's just easier to bring the hay in and put that in for them. Stormtrooper. 
I was talking about you earlier. Yes. You're a troublemaker sometimes, aren't you? Yes, you just like getting up on things. This is Stormtrooper. He's the little troublemaker that always gets up on things. Yes. Sien is a little princess that never gets in trouble. Yes. Bonnie is a little tank that just seems to eat as much as she ever can. Ginger's always a little shy. All right, first person perspective, goat feeding time. Hey, hey, nobody escapes. Indigo, you stay out. So exciting. Don't, don't steal food. Curry. Yeah, you like that, don't you? The girls here have enough hay that I don't have to replenish this right now. The boys never leave enough. I always have to feed them every single day. If I did have to feed these goats more hay, it'd be easy to just take these little clips off move this roof over a little, drop the new hay in, then put it right back. Sienna, do you want a little treat? Yeah? Whoa, get off. Bonnie, you can have a little treat. Valkyrie, you got plenty of treats. Okay. Yes. Yes. Autumn, do you want a piece of hay? You like that? Yeah.
The boys are even more rambunctious. Hey, patience. Patience is good. This is why we have to give them the grain first. I would not be able to get the hay in there through all these goat heads. Okay, you ready? I think you're ready. This week's video is a little bit short, so let's take a look at another way to feed the goats. This part was shot earlier, before the rainy weather set in. It's a pretty nice time of year to be a goat. Snacks just fall from the trees. When the fence was going in, our goats had to be confined to this deck area, and all they could do was watch as these tasty leaves fall just out of their reach. When that temporary electric fence was up, using the leaf blower to provide them extra snacks wasn't ideal because debris on those electric wires tended to make the electric fence not work as well. I think it's time to try that leaf blower again. I've already moved their water buckets out of the way so they won't get too messed up. 